समीक्षा ओवर टू यू राम थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग it gives me immense pleasure to extend you a very warm welcome on behalf of rn marwa and company llp i am samiksha lohia marketing manager at rnm which was established by late mr rn marwa in the year 1946 our team of 100 plus professionals cater to the clients need in the field of audit and business advisory tax and regulatory services legal and company law services and consultancy Our head office is located in New Delhi, and we have branch offices in Gurgaon and Bangalore. We have been associated with Geneva Group International and were awarded the membership member firm of the year 2019. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Raghu Marwa, managing partner at RNM. Mr. Marwa is the in charge of consultancy services and international taxation services provided by the firm. He has launched a corporate finance firm by the name of RNM Capital Advisors in 2019 and was named among us the top 25 most promising merger and acquisition consultants by the Consultants Review magazine in 2016. He has co-authored a book titled International Tax and Business Guide and his articles have been published in leading newspapers including Economic Times, Dainik Jagran, Navbharat Times and many more. he has also been a guest speaker on cnbc awards so this was just a brief about our firm and our speaker let's begin the session now over to you sir good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you so much for joining us today on a saturday morning i hope you all are doing well safe and uh, in your homes following the government's uh, uh, advisories uh, i know it's tough time for everybody but uh, i think uh, safety is first uh, with that i'd like to uh, commence uh, by quoting uh, something from the bhagavad gita which says that lust anger and greed are the three doors to hell if this pandemic has taught us anything it is to find a silver lining by taking this opportunity to reset and uh making uh each of us more uh, aware of our uh, surroundings of nature and trying to see how we can be more sustainable uh, by thinking more about climate change and the environment having said that uh, let's dive straight into uh the the topic on hand which is the impacts of covid-19 and how covid-19 is affecting all of us uh firstly there is obviously going to be a global recession that we are seeing this recession in the global economy is likely to continue for uh you know some are saying maybe a year some are saying longer but uh, let's pause to understand what sort of recession there is and what sort of recovery one we can expect from it so a recession uh in terms of economics has either a, a, a v curve which is a v shaped curve or a u curve a v curve is when there is a steep fall which follows a trough and a quick recovery uh the output which is lost is fully recouped during the rebound and therefore we all have been hoping that this recession also is a v curve where we can see a fast recovery and things normalizing uh, uh, quite quickly however what happens in a u curve is that there is a long term when when there is a long term damage to the balance sheets and to the labor markets uh, there is obviously a, a very slow recovery and those slow recoveries can at times take years and therefore we are hoping that it is not a u curve which will you know get dragged on and there would be an extended time period for recovery uh what also happens obviously at these times is that there is a general disruption there is a disruption of the supply chain and also of the customer demand so i like to highlight here uh, what is happening uh, in china because china is a couple of months ahead of the rest of the world in terms of uh, uh, you know the impact of the pandemic and over there although the supply chain has come back on uh, the customer demand or the, 
the, the demand side is still very weak and uh, what that is leading to is, is obviously a, a protracted uh, a disruption um, and and um, you know closer home say in delhi uh, there have been red zones or hotspots which have been advised and i think most of delhi i think uh, if the numbers are correct 9 out of 10, 10 districts of delhi have been uh, uh, put down as hotspots so i do think that big cities like delhi bombay bangalore will continue to be in the hotspots and we all would need to uh, uh, you know take safeguards of social distancing even after the 3rd of may so there are likely to be uh, uh, disruptions of demand continuing uh, where we would uh, uh, you know each of us in our own way try to uh, uh, come back to a normalized situation moving ahead what what there are challenges obviously in collecting receivables in a timely fashion and uh, uh, you know these receivables at times there is a larger challenge to receive it from small to mid sized firms and obviously when that happens the risk premium of dealing with such small and mid sized businesses or firms uh, increases and there is a natural preference to move away from working with uh, 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 such small and uh, firms and moving to work with larger businesses so uh, one of the unfortunate things that happens in recessionary times is that large businesses tend to grow faster and small businesses tend to shrink uh, and therefore we all are hoping and and praying that government of india will come up with some package for the msme sector uh, because these are uh, uh, you know tough times for them and and you know uh, collecting receivables is only one side of the challenge that the msmes are facing uh, today the next is obviously the landmark attitudinal shift which uh, can be expected in a post covid world and what does one mean by that i'd like to uh, illustrate through some examples uh, so in uh, you know at the time of the bubonic plague uh, you know it led to an end of feudalism in europe Uh, when there was World War II, it led to greater women participation in the workforce. Uh, at at the 9/11 attack time, it led to an acceptance of higher level of screening and surveillance, whether it's at airports or other establishments. And at, when it was SARS, uh, a couple of years back, you may remember, it led to a boom in online retail. so what is covid going to lead to in terms of the attitudinal shift uh, one can only guess but if i were to estimate uh, definitely it's going to lead to a greater acceptance of work from home unmanned retail which is a greater participation of artificial intelligence and hopefully a focus on climate change and and hygiene being taken a lot more seriously in the world uh, with that uh we'll move to the next which is how do we uh, uh how do we effectively conserve our cash flow and and the starting point of conserving cash flow is to really know uh how uh, where one stands and to know where one stands uh we need to obviously prepare a realistic 13 week cash flow forecast and everybody asks me why 13 week because your cash flow forecast should be on a weekly basis and 13 week is typically a 3 month runway so april may june uh, uh one needs to uh, be most careful about about this uh, uh, first quarter of this year to see how the cash flow can be conserved and uh, for those of you who uh, are are there on on the talk i think we've got about 250 attendees right now uh uh we've we've obviously got a mix of uh, uh businessmen and professionals so i'm going to talk a little bit about you know uh, uh the importance of of preparing a cash flow forecast uh and what that does so what that does is basically you need to isolate recognize and quantify the extent of the cash flow issue that is faced by each of our businesses right because uh, uh once you quantify that is the first step that you can take to plug the gap one obviously needs to quantify to be able to see how one can raise the 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 deficit cash flow amount and this forecast would become then the fountain head 
of your efforts to manage your receivables, the inventory, and the payables better. Estimating the cash flow incoming, uh, which includes, uh, you know, the recovery of old receivables, refunds from maybe government authorities, and also the new billings or the new uh, 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 sales that one is doing during these three months. Uh, uh, these are these are some of the aspects that one has to estimate, uh, you know, realistically for the next 13 weeks. And similarly, on the outgoing side, one needs to estimate uh, what is going to be the utility cost in terms of electricity, water, and so on, for, so forth. Payroll costs, the government dues in terms of the, the, the due date for TDS, for instance, is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, uh, GST dues, EMIs in terms of bank, uh, 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 you know, payables. So these are the outgoings that one has to estimate uh, to be able to realistically come to uh, 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 you know that deficit figure if there is any and see then how to plug that deficit i think over here i like to pause to just uh, 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 recalibrate because a lot of businessmen during these times uh, are, are facing uh, 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 you uni know unique situations where uh, uh, the uncertainty is leading them to raise a fundamental issue of whether i am unable to pay or versus unwilling to pay now what that means is that there may be businessmen who are uh, are able to pay the cash flows are supporting the uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 payments but they may be just hoarding their cash and saying you know look i am not willing to make this payment because i don't know uh, on third may whether it's the lockdown is going to get extended further or what going to are going to happen in terms of uh, the number of new cases, whether we are actively, uh, you know, going to be able to flatten the curve and therefore uh, the restrictions are going to get lifted. So there is that uncertainty which is causing a particular heartburn in the minds of a lot of people. And there is an unwillingness to pay, even if there is not an, uh, 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 if, even if there is not a question on the ability to pay. And this is a more fundamental question which uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, goes back to either an optimist or a pessimist and what kind of an outlook you would have. And I do think that one has to be a little balanced when it comes down to uh, 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 making payables because, uh, you know, the more we get lagged into uh, uh, outstandings and old payables are not being paid on time, it's it's a slippery slope. One One, one needs to be careful. Uh, uh, you know, whether you'll be able to come back on track once you really are uh, 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 delayed on your uh, 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 payables. Uh, so on this point, I'd like to take a poll, uh, uh, you know, uh, so that we, we get some sort of a reaction from everybody on what do you expect, when do you expect rather the global economy to recover? Uh, you should be seeing on your screens uh, four options, uh, whether it's six months, one to two years, two to three years, or five years. So what does all the participants or the attendees on the call today, what is their view of how long the global economy will take to recover? Uh, just to take a dipstick analysis, uh, uh, we will obviously share the results of the polls that everybody is wiser as to uh, you know uh, what everybody's thinking and while everybody is taking the poll uh, i'd like to uh, uh, share uh, uh, on a lighter note something that a question which was raised to a millennial um, as to how have you been spending your time and the millennial asks, uh, the millennial answers by saying it's like well responding to texts takes about 16 hours and then after that i try to get some rest so i i, I do think a lot of you would uh, 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 have have your family members around and everybody's busy on their phones and their gadgets and answering whatsapp messages and texts uh, i do think that takes up a lot of time these days but uh, uh, yeah i think everybody is finding their own ways to deal with uh, uh, you know the extra time that now everybody has on their hands so uh, I think the uh, response of the quick poll that has come in, 
is that uh, people are expecting one to two years that 66 percent of people on on the, on the call today are expecting it to take between one to two years for the global economy to recover and after that 20 percent which is the next largest segment is saying two to three years so obviously people are very cautious on this and they are expecting uh, 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 you know at least a one year to two year runway for things to get back on track uh, moving ahead uh, uh, you know to to the to the next uh, to the next to the next aspect which is uh, how do how does one improve the cash flows what are the facets to the story of improving cash flows and uh, today we've dealt with three aspects out of that uh, maintaining vendor relationships and here when we're talking about vendors we not only mean vendors for goods but also for services it includes your banks and financial institution uh, pay payables and the, you know that relationship as well uh, the next is the striking a balance with the employees and employees includes not only your permanent employees but also your contract workers or contract employees and the third aspect is uh, managing government dues uh, and government dues again would be maybe TDS obligation, GST obligation, other uh, uh, government payables. There are, uh, uh, you know, these three heads, so to speak, cover a major uh, uh, portion of, uh, you know, the 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 payables or the outgo from the cash flow that you would be uh, putting together. So one needs to be astute in trying to see how to manage and improve the cash flows by managing these three buckets so first we're moving on to vendor relationships and when we talk about vendor relationships i think there's a lot of talk that a lot of you may have read in the newspapers about force majeure clause and and uh, uh, you know uh, the force majeure clause is being uh, tom tommed as as a major uh, 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 as a major instrument for for saving cash flows, uh, we'll we'll dwell some light onto this and whether uh, to examine whether the coronavirus situation is exactly considered as an FM event in India or not, and uh, uh, you know what 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 is the background to this. So, uh, firstly, I'd like to say that you know. It, 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 managing vendor relationships and and examining the force majeure clause is very fact specific so the facts of all of you on the call today uh, are different and each of your facts need to be considered before uh, jumping into the bandwagon of force majeure uh, uh, and and uh, one needs to be quite uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that there are likely to be a, a, a flood of force major litigations in Indian courts uh, going forward uh, if if we are going to be using the force major clause unilaterally uh, without uh, you know considering all the facets of it so so let's just go into what the force major clause means and how is it defined uh, the force major is defined under the manual for procurement of goods 2017 issued by the government of india ministry of finance department of expenditure as and i'm quoting extraordinary events or circumstance beyond human control such as an event described as an act of god such as natural calamity or events such as a war strike riots crimes but not including negligence or wrongdoing predictable or seasonal rain and any other event specifically excluded in the clause so simply put a force major event can be said to be a uh, act of god and uh, when would this get invoked and whose obligation is it to discharge uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the 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 onus of proof to prove that in fact the the coronavirus situation is a uh, is a force major event uh, to, to go through that, uh, uh, one can needs to understand what are the laws in place. And Section 32 
of the Indian Contracts Act 1872, which deals with enforcement of contract contingent on events happening, as well as Section 56, which deals with doctrine of frustration, is relevant to understand before one dives into the scope of the force majeure event. Further, what is important over here is uh, on February 19, 2020, the Government of India, through the Department of Expenditure Procurement Policy Division, issued an office memorandum clarifying that the disruption of the supply chains due to the spread of coronavirus in China or any other country will be considered as a case of natural calamity and the FM clause could be cited. So, in effect, what we have is that the Government of India is admitting that there is a, 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 an FM clause or a FM event which has got triggered and this, of course, will help all the private parties who are on the call today uh, uh, to discharge their obligation to prove that there was in fact a force majeure which prevented them from uh, enforcing or executing the contract. So what actually happens is that e you have to uh, uh, show to the court that there were efforts that you made to execute the contract despite the FM event and you were constrained from executing the contract and therefore you had no option but to uh, 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 you know, not complete your end of the bargain as per whatever contract with your vendor that you had in terms of non-payment of, of uh, you know, timely uh, bills or, uh, you know, at times not, not paying your landlord and so on and so forth. Over here again, uh, what we have is uh, 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 we've got some case laws because obviously uh, these, uh, uh, you know, this concept of force majeure has been on the statute for many years. So we've got the Supreme Court judgment in the case of Energy Watchdog versus CERC, which is a 2017 judgment of the Supreme Court, uh, which is commonly referred as the Adani Power case, uh, which uh, rejected the applicant's claim based upon contract documents that the increase of price of coal by Indonesia was not a force major event. In this case, what had happened is that Indonesia had increased the price of coal and due to that, uh, Adani Power was not able to supply the coal to, uh, uh, you know, the contracted parties and they tried to invoke force majeure and the Supreme Court in this judgment, leading judgment said merely an increase of price was not a force majeure event, but this judgment was entirely based on facts, like I said before, and based on the contract documents that were signed between the parties. So the documents obviously are very critical uh, uh, to, to determine uh, your sustainability of your force major, uh, 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 you know, uh, the trigger of the force major event. The other leading judgment over here is the Alopi Prasad and Sons Limited versus Union of India, so, which was a Supreme Court judgment of 1960, and Satyabrata Ghosh versus Mugni uh, Ram Bangur and Company, which is a Supreme Court judgment of 1953. These are both landmark cases. Whenever anybody talks about force major, so I'm sure each of you would get some uh, legal help to try and see whether your facts fall within the ambit of these leading judgments uh, uh, of the Supreme Court, which obviously needs to be analyzed. Another aspect over here, other than triggering a force major uh, uh, clause to, to not make payment to your vendors, is to check on the insurance claims, whether you are covered under insurance, whether, uh, uh, you know, suppose, uh, uh, your customer is triggering a force majeure on you and uh, uh, therefore you are not receiving payments whether uh, uh, there is any sort of insurance that you have taken or whether your insurance policy covers a force majeure event and therefore you may be able to file an insurance claim uh, 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 for non-receipt of your payments from your customers. Uh, uh, so, so basically insurance companies are also likely to, to face some hardships at this time because their claims are likely to increase. But that may be another way in which uh, 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 small businesses and other businesses may be able to fund the cash flow gap by, by uh, you know, uh, claiming uh, from the insurance companies, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the force majeure event which has restricted them from maybe carrying on production or carrying on uh, uh, the rendering of their services. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of insurance companies, uh, you know, in their loss of profit or loss of, uh, uh, you know, trading have got force majeure clauses in them. One needs to examine your insurance uh, 
uh, uh, terms to see whether th there is something that you can take advantage of. So uh, I hope uh, 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 this is clear in terms of force majeure, when it can be triggered, when it cannot be triggered. Uh, uh, one needs to go through the, the documentation, one needs to discharge certain obligations, so it cannot be done unilaterally. You have to make efforts to execute the contract despite the FM event. And these steps are obviously important to avoid future litigations and penalties and you know so on and so forth in case you lose those litigation cases which may arise uh, down the line. Uh, now we'd like to ask all our, our attendees, uh, we've seen the numbers have gone up. We've got now over 275 attendees on the call today. Uh, another question, the impact of COVID-19 on the future of jobs. I think this is a, a, of particular concern. You'd see that on your screen now, the question, uh, what is the impact of COVID-19 on the future of job? What's most likely to happen? Is there likely to be a fall in recruitment? Are salaries uh, uh, going to get, uh, 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 you know, pared down? Salaries going to get cut? Is remote working likely to become the new norm? Are new jobs of different kinds, uh, will they get created? What is going to happen, uh, uh, you know, on the job market? We all have, uh, you know, seen what's happening in different parts of the world where unemployment rates are going up. Uh, uh, but at the same time, like I said, there are new uh, jobs which are getting created. So whilst the, the callers, uh, uh, attendees are answering this, I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, again, on a lighter note, uh, uh, share what somebody had told me the other day that after the eighth day of isolation, it's like Vegas in my house. We're losing money at by the minute and nobody knows what time it is. So we all, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, when we go to 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 Vegas, uh, to a casino, we all know we're going to lose money, uh, but we still go to have fun. Uh, I'm not saying that during this lockdown we all are having fun, but I think it's time to, for everybody to look at the brighter side to see how one can come out of this uh, uh, stronger and and see how. Uh, uh, one can improve our situation. So we've got the, the results of the quick poll in front of us. And uh, unanimously, 45% of you are saying that the remote working will become the new norm. So definitely uh, uh, all our offices, uh, our, 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 our work relationships, our team styles, our cultures in our organizations will be going in for a change as per if we, we uh, you know, follow the poll, poll, your poll results, remote working becoming the new norm. The second, uh, 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 you know, highest poll result is the fall in recruitment. 22% of you are saying that there's going to be a fall in recruitment. So definitely, I think uh, uh, we, we all are going to face some tough times, as you said earlier, during the next one to two years. So we need to realign our work processes to to see how we can uh, uh, work from home, uh, do remote working and, and be part of a, 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 an increased digital uh, work environment, which will uh, 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 hopefully uh, lead to, uh, uh, you know, enhanced safety and, and security for everybody and, and lead to a, a better uh, a work environment or a newer work environment, I should say. Uh, a lot of people are talking about how, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, tea breaks and coffee breaks and little chitter, chitter chatter at, at offices are going to no longer be there and, and uh, how things are going to change when you're when you're replacing your work colleagues and and your lighter moments with a work from home kind of environment and, and Zoom calls and, and, and more digital house party environments. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I think we, we, we're sitting in interesting times. We, we're all going to be moving forward, uh, uh, you know, in, in manners which one best can cope with. Uh, the next topic over here is obviously striking a balance with employees. And this is a, a, a very sensitive uh, 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 area where we need to be uh, uh, cognizant uh, that, uh, uh, you know, human resources are obviously the most valuable resources that a lot of us have in our organizations. 
and but at the same time monthly payroll expenses forms a substantial portion of the outgo of cash flows so there is a, a, a sort of a balance that one needs to draw over here and in the background of this uh, uh, there are obviously various regulations which have come out there was earlier the regulations uh, 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 an advisory which had come out from the labor department and then on the 29th of march the central government through the ministry of home had issued an order invoking the powers under section 21 of the national disaster management act 2005 under which directions were given to the employers to pay full wages to their workers by treating them on duty during the period of lockdown and i'm sure a lot of you on the call may have received uh, 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 you know uh, uh, legal opinions from various uh, 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 you know labor lawyers analyzing the regulations analyzing uh, this march 29th order and going through the the language very carefully and over here again i'd like just like to read again the exact direction it says directing employers to pay full wages to their workers by treating them on duty during the period of lockdown so the two words which are popping up over here is wages and workers so a very interesting uh, you know uh, uh, discussion which has been going on is whether <coughs> excuse me whether this does cover a uh, a uh, 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 you know white collar uh, uh, workers or this is only applicable to blue collar workers or shop floor uh, 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 you know in a factory environment in a uh, uh, industrial environment and does it also cover offices and and other uh, uh, retail uh, shops and other establishments where you don't have wages being paid to workers so this is a, a, a very interesting uh, 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 kind of a discussion and and like i said different law firms have been giving uh, different interpretations on this uh, uh, you know and uh, i i would again uh, you know like to err on the side of caution and not try to advocate a very aggressive interpretation of these words because uh, uh, you know it, it is uh, you know a reflection of the times that we are sitting in uh, uh, one needs to be a little sensitive uh and and uh, and therefore in 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 this presentation what we have advocated is a voluntary pay cut or a voluntary pay deferral as the best solution uh, uh by by really having a chat with your employees by by communicating with them by being quite uh, uh, robust on your communication talking through them all through this process and i think what is the a uh, worst thing that an employer can do is uh, uh, you know clamping down and not communicating because what happens is there is uh, bound to be a fear of bad news because everybody is reading it in the papers reading it uh, uh, you know seeing it in the news on the televisions so there is already a fear of bad news and that obviously impacts the morale so what needs to happen is a, a, a frank chat Uh, after an in initial assessment after you've managed to do your cash flow working and estimation and if there is a a, a, a squeeze if there is a tightness if there is a deficit uh, you after you've done your number crunching uh, you take a call and uh, uh, you know communicate whatever is the decision uh, and and what what uh, what should be communicated is communicated once so that there is no incremental bad news which is following you you communicate it once and then after that message goes out uh, the people who are left on the job uh, know that okay now we are in it together uh, 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 that we are good and there are no more pink slips there are no more pay cuts and now we have to work towards uh, as a team to move forward as uh, towards a common goal to to bring our organization out of whatever uh, recessionary times and mess that that uh, is there uh, uh, and and uh, that is i think the the uh, um, approach uh, uh, which one 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 needs to, to 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 take and and even if there are instances where staff is being let go of or reduction in compensations uh, like i said we have to do it one business owners has to be communicate that to all 
and out placements uh, uh, you know this is the good suggestion that i received and one needs to do certain out placements which can be done for people who are being let go you know you can uh, try and help your hr people can try and help uh, 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 the people who are let being let go to get other jobs in other organization or other fields that if you are aware of who are continue to recruit you know e commerce and those industries are booming so there are industries which are booming uh, where you could help your people who are being let go off to be outplaced to kind of reduce the negative impact uh, 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 you know the, the the negative impact on morale by trying to do your little bit for society to see how uh, uh, you know they, they could even though you're letting go because your business is can't afford it you you're helping them by doing some outplacement again over here what is important is a gtm strategy which is a go to market strategy uh, when uh, when you you know uh, consider say, say uh, doing some hiring freezes uh, uh, what happens to the new products or the new verticals which you have either launched or are in the midst of launching what happens uh, 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 you know uh, to to all those initiatives of organizations are those going to become uh, uh, you know completely uh, you know back to zero are you going to you know continue some of them uh, uh, selectively what's going to happen to your go to market strategy one needs to uh, 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 really uh, evaluate obviously uh, you know your customer and your customer industries to see uh, whether those new products or new verticals uh, uh, would uh, you know need to go through some sort of a, a rejig uh, again uh, uh, one way of compensating your employees uh, if you are uh, looking at pay cuts is uh, 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 or, or pay freezes is offering equity to the highly compensated team members uh, people who agree to forego cash compensation in exchange for equity compensation are uh, obviously sacrificing for the business they are exhibiting loyalty and they are investing in the future of the business so aligning their interests with the rest of the equity capital stack is, is, is all benefits so but again some organizations can offer uh, uh, this option of equity uh, other organizations might face difficulty in convincing their employees but this is another option which uh, you know i'd like to put on the table when you are having that conversation with your employees uh, uh, so so obviously this is uh, a tough times for everybody uh, uh, you know obviously the businessmen are trying to look at survival and when you look at survival you're obviously looking at uh, 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 your own survival instinct first taking over before anybody else's so uh, uh, but one needs to strike a balance i think that's the key takeaway from this uh, conversation is that one needs to you know strike a balance and and see how uh, uh, you know maybe if things are going to look better you could have a reinstatement of the pay cards at a later date there are various options that you know obviously people are brainstorming on that one needs to consider based on your facts uh, at this point let's take another poll and uh, examine what are the industries or the sectors which are likely to be most affected because of covid-19 uh, you will have uh, the the four options on your screen tourism uh, uh, agri sector import and export sector manufacturing sector which are the sectors which you feel uh, are going to be most affected uh, um, obviously uh, you know the the most affected sectors are going to face more severe cash flow issues in terms of employee uh, uh retrenchment in terms of pay cuts and so on and so forth so there are some sectors which uh, inevitably are facing the maximum heat and there are other sectors like i said uh, where uh, you know hopefully it's temporary and there could be a v curve uh, you know uh, uh, push back up once you know the lockdown is lifted uh, at this point again i'd like to quote something from a, a famous hollywood movie called silver linings playbook where uh, uh, the main protagonist had said this and i'm quoting you have to do everything you can you have to work your hardest and if you do you have a shot at a silver, silver lining so i think in these tough times we all uh, uh, you know there's no uh, replacement for hard work we all need to do uh, hard work and then hope that luck favors you and that there is a silver lining where 
there is something positive that's going to come out of this. Uh, uh, we have the results of the quick poll. And I think uh, unanimously 83% of people are saying that tourism is going to be the most affected uh, because of COVID-19. I, I do think, uh, uh, you know, people are, are uh, you know, have already spent so much time, 40 to 50 days in their houses with their family. They are not now looking at, uh, uh, you know, taking another break, traveling or, or going elsewhere. Uh, uh, so, you know, I also share the view of, of all the attendees here that tourism is going to be badly hit but one never knows one uh, uh, you know in india it, it's funny you may have religious tourism uh, uh, you know going to uh, vishnu devi or going to other places of worship uh, uh, you know coming up because you know at this time people are uh, uh, becoming more uh, you know having a firmer belief in god and therefore you may want to visit some some religious institution so uh, maybe there's a silver lining out of tourism as well. One doesn't know. One one can only hope that the tourism sector will pull through. Uh, 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 will pull through this tough time. And uh, uh, let's let's hope uh, you know for for all the listeners out there who are uh, uh, impacted uh, by by the uh, COVID, you know, who may be in the tourism sector, that that things get normalized uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, with that, uh, uh, we can uh, move ahead to, to the next item uh, on, on our bucket, which is managing government dues. Uh, uh, government dues, uh, you know, like I said earlier, GST, TDS are, are some of the biggest buckets among the government due payments. Uh, extension of due dates have been announced for monthly GST payments and GST refunds uh, already by the Honorable Finance Minister. Uh, uh, GSTR 3B, which is the monthly self-declaration filing, uh, uh, that has been extended uh, uh, for the month of February. It was earlier, the due date was March 20th. It's been extended to April 7th. And the GSTR 3B, which was for March 2020, uh, uh, which was due on April 20th, has been extended to May 5th. So we've already got some extensions which have been announced. Uh, uh, in the 3B, similarly, there are extensions uh, in due dates for filing GSTR-1, which is the monthly return, uh, which summarizes all the sales, which is the outward supplies of taxpayer. For February 2020, the due date was March 11th, uh, 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 and, and no extension has been given for the February, which continues at March 11th. The March uh, GSTR-1, which was due on April 11th, has been extended to June 30th. So there has been an extension on that. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you would be aware of this uh, and your consultants or your CAs would anyways be advising that you know this can be pushed forward. Uh, uh, there are obviously interest uh, dues which are there. Uh, you know, if you're availing of these extended uh, due dates, these uh, earlier from 18%, uh, interest rates, they have been declined or reduced to 9%. Uh, and this is, I think, similar uh, rate has been reduced, uh, not only in GST, but also in TDS from 18 to 9. Uh, so, uh, and, and also uh, late fees and penalties <clears throat> have been, uh, 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 you know, reduced uh, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for TDS at least. I think there are some late fees which may still be there for GSTR-1. Uh, <clears throat> but these are positive signs that the government is trying to help, uh, uh, you know, in terms of extending the due dates. Uh, uh, the the uh, Unfortunately, the TDS for March uh, 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 is still due at the end of this month. Uh, so there has been no extension for, for making the payment of TDS dues uh, for the month of March. Uh, and and that continues to uh, uh, you know be an obligation that needs to be paid. But of course, the interest rate has been reduced. If you do, in fact, fail to make payment on the due date, there is a, a lower interest rate uh, that the government has has permitted. So uh, uh, I'm assuming that all of you, while you prepare your uh, 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 while you prepare your uh, cash flow statements, will factor in will factor in the uh, government dues. Uh, uh, 
I'm going to quickly push forward uh, the next point, which is a circular which had come out on GST, which provides certain clarifications for a, a, a bunching of refund claims across financial years, a, a refund of accumulated ITC input tax credit, and change in manner of refund of tax paid. So these are this is just a circular which uh, uh, one one can be aware of. This is a quick poll. Uh, uh, um, I think, which uh, in the interest of time, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to do very quickly, uh, which is how is the private sector can proactively address the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, practicing work from home, utilization of CSR funds for COVID-19 relief, providing funds and mentorship to small businesses, utilizing manufacturing and resources for COVID-19 relief, uh, you know, uh, for instance. So uh, there are various ways in which businesses can uh, help, uh, uh, you know, uh, continue to improve, uh, uh, you know, while the results come out of the poll, I, I'll talk about five bold objectives that companies need to set. Uh, uh, A, how do we restart? Uh, we've got the result, uh, it, you know, down on uh, similar lines. I think 53% of you are saying practicing work from home, uh, you know, so similar to what we had discussed earlier. Uh, come back to the five bold objectives. How do we restart and stabilize with zero risk of COVID-19? I think this is the immediate next uh, objective that companies have, that we need to stabilize and restart. How do we do that? We need to plan for that. Can we operate at 50% of the fixed cost? This is the major cash flow target that each of us should give ourselves. Can we reduce our fixed cost? This is a, 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 a major initiative which will take some time to brainstorm and evaluate and, and uh, come to some sort of a, 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 a finalized conclusion on can we innovate through selling new selling strategies? Can we use more uh, the digital platform to sell? Uh, selling strategies will go in for a change. Can we leapfrog into a digital adoption and deployment using the pandemic as an opportunity? Can we explore emerging opportunities such as new product diversification during this lockdown? Uh, digital adoption for better CRM, which is customer relationship management, or better execution and manufacturing processes, better collections. Uh, there are various ways in which each of us can uh, try and uh, improve. Uh, uh, now for the conclusion, uh, uh, definitely a, a, a word on uh, uh, VC funds and you know how uh, uh, startups are coping with this. Uh, you know all the companies which were based on a cash burn uh, uh, model. Uh, which were driven by top line driven valuation models. All of them are going to face even more tough times because obviously uh, uh, likely uh, that the VC funds out there are going to uh, carefully reconsider or recalibrate uh, uh, the valuations and also recalibrate the expected uh, 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 business scale ups uh, based on the COVID uh, uh, you know, fallouts. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, it, it may be good for a lot of startups who may be on this call to examine uh, or move away from tier one VC firms and examine non-traditional sources of capital like family offices and, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, look at, uh, you know, expect, uh, you know, much more conditionalities being imposed in from the typical term sheets, uh, uh, you know, and, and seeing how, uh, uh, you know, businesses can cope. Uh, so, you know, to, to summarize, one really needs to focus on cash flows and, uh, you know, to close out, I'd like to quote again from the Bhagavad Gita, work for work's sake, not for yourself. Act, but do not be attached to your actions. Be in the world, but not of it. With that, I'd like to open the floor to questions. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of questions. Uh, we'd like to make this as interactive as possible. <clears throat> Each of you would have a, a, a question or a chat uh, section on on the uh, 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 go to webinar control panel that you can ask, or maybe you could raise your hands and uh, uh, you know you could uh, uh, ask those questions. Uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, put on the webcam now so that each of you can. Uh, Interact participants, who have, uh, participants who have any questions, they can either raise their hand or post their question on the panel over there. So uh, I'm seeing some raised hands here. 
first one is mr amit mitra you can unmute yourself and ask the question mr amit mitra Samit Mitra, can you hear me? Uh, so next one is uh, Mr. Anil Makiza. Uh, Hello. Hello, Mr. Marma. Thanks for a nice session. Uh, what I understand is uh, GSTR one late fee is uh, waived off. Uh, it's a, somewhere in the discussion, uh, you have mentioned that it is uh, applicable. Could you please give a clarity on this? Yes, I think uh, uh, you're right. Earlier there was a late fee of two hundred rupees per day, but I think that has also been waived off. Uh, you're right. I think uh, there there may have been a little bit of a uh, error over there. All right. Thanks a lot. Lovely session. Thank you so much, Mr. Makija. Any other questions? Uh, next one is from Mr. Anshul Kochar. Uh, Mr. Anshul Kochar, uh, you can unmute yourself and speak. Anshul Kochar. Hello. Yes, please go ahead, Mr. Kocher. Yeah, yeah. So, hi, Raghu, and thank you so much for uh, giving an insight about uh, about what you feel about the pandemic. Uh, a small question that I have, and I am actually uh, from a startup background, and uh, have started my own uh, venture three months back, uh, which is into healthcare. So, just wanted to understand and take uh, your wanted to take your view on. When you said that uh, uh, a VC would definitely like to, uh, uh, and, and and we will see the slowdown in uh, in the capital market that uh, whatever the money they they used to put, now we will see a slowdown out there. So what according to you uh, a slowdown means? I mean uh, a person or a startup or or you can say venture like us who are looking for angel round. Uh, are you saying uh, uh, that would be gonna slow down as per you in this? Uh, scenario or people who have already raised angel or till series A and are looking for series B, series B and series C are going to face this slowdown. So very good question. I think uh, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, in the startup sector, uh, it's going to be across. So not only uh, startups who have managed to raise, say, series A, uh, and depending on how much cash they're sitting on. And when was the timing of the last raise? Uh, they had, they may have anything from six months of runway to say 18 months runway. Uh, and you know, at this time, a lot of people, even who've raised Series A, are looking at bridge finance rounds and trying to uh, reach out to their existing uh, investors for some sort of a, a bridge. Uh, and and those investors are, uh, you know, some of them are being supportive, some of them are, are telling them to bootstrap. But I think for a startup who's yet to receive an angel round, uh, you know, you did mention you're in the healthcare space. Healthcare space is obviously one of the spaces uh, which will uh, see a good uh, uptick thanks to COVID, uh, you know, uh, because obviously healthcare is a global focus now and further investments in healthcare, uh, you know, at a governmental, uh, you know, level as well as private level is uh, going to see an uptick. Uh, but right now, I think uh, uh, I would like to uh, be conservative and say anybody who can grow during or and demonstrate growth during a COVID kind of an, uh, 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 period definitely will be able to uh, uh, impress the angels as well as the investors and be, be in a much stronger position to, to raise uh, uh, good money. Because, uh, like like we said before, most companies are going to see a very very negative first quarter, and anybody who is 
an outlier from that uh, will will be able to stand up and outshine and, and uh, you know hopefully gain the confidence of the investor community yeah uh, uh, i mean uh, i mean i got your point but uh, my concern was uh, so it's fine that uh, at this point of time when you say that you we can be self sustainable uh, but yes we can be self sustainable if we if we don't scale up right so for uh, everybody uh, uh, when whenever they are uh, looking for angel or series they, what why they need money is uh, basically uh, when when they when they feel that they need to scale up and need to reach out to the masses as soon as possible and hence the capital is required um, when it comes to sustainability uh, the model that we are also working on is self sustainable till the time it is not scaled up uh, if we if we want to operate in delhi ncr and if we want to stick to our limits uh, that is still a sustainable uh, business model that we that we are running but at the end of the day if we want to showcase and uh, if you want to uh, i mean i mean uh, uh, tell our uh, vcs that this is what uh, our attraction that uh, we committed and we are showing it to you and hence that that traction to show that traction we really need capital so uh, uh, i am i'm actually talking to uh, quite a couple of uh, vcs but what uh, feedback that we are also getting that they they themselves wants to see a traction for next uh, one or two months i don't know if they want to wait and see the how how the world will move in next one or two months and uh, on the valuation side everybody is quiet so uh, just wanted to check uh, have, have you or uh, of or uh, your clients are facing the similar issues or it is like they are uh, they are more focused and uh, they are more about their old portfolio rather than putting money into a new portfolio uh, no i would tend to agree i think uh, uh, there are you know if i would to uh, be straight there are three impacts a there are vcs or investors who are taking a wait and watch b there are some investors who are saying that okay uh, valuations have come down let's use this opportunity to do some bottom fishing and c mm -hmm. there are third type of investors who are saying that okay uh, uh, in in direct health related or uh, uh, you know covid related uh, uh, startups uh, uh, let's see how we can write up some sort of seed checks and those seed checks uh, 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 of course are coming at uh, low value with more strings attached more conditionalities and so on and so forth but all three of them are happening uh, I, 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 for you what my advice personally would be that uh, uh, you know focus on your micro market treat it as a beta testing phase and see how you can scale up in delhi ncr at this time itself so that you can demonstrate that look even during covid i was able to scale up within delhi ncr with limited resources and limited cash in my books from a to uh, say b level and obviously with that kind of cash flow injection we can you know demonstrate a 10x increase or whatever else sure thank you so much thank you, Any so, other thank you so much yeah jatin kapoor mr Uh, Mr. Jatin Kapoor, you yeah. can speak. You are unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Raku, for having a very uh, intellectual, informative uh, session on the funding side. So my question is on the, as you mentioned, that the worst impacted areas will be MSMEs, and since big fish can survive this uh, cash flow crunch, so any take on the government initiative on uh, providing them funding in terms of lower interest rate loans or any support from SIDB or those kind of institutions so that they these small fish can also survive in this market so i think unfortunately what uh, uh, you know the rbi governor you may have heard him yesterday also what they are focusing and i think what the government's current thinking is more institutionalized support so rbi governor is talking about support to the nbfc sector support to the microfinance institutions as a sector so that they can then further trickle down and support their uh, uh, you know uh, the sectors that they are uh, working in but uh, uh, you know the existing uh, uh, schemes of msme under uh, uh, nsic schemes should be schemes i think those are more the question is whether should be uh, 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 and those other nsic bodies have the cash flow available to really dole out at this juncture 
and that is i think where government's efforts are going to capitalize be or capitalize some of these other institutions more so that they can make those efforts but practically i think those efforts will uh, you know come only after the lockdown gets because that's when you know, applications will be moved that's when people can uh, you know uh, make some uh, you know interaction with you know the sidbi officers to make some pitches as to you know what kind of funding that they require so i think uh, in our country there are enough schemes i think what is needed is better implementation so yeah uh, you know in this uh, dire straits we will have a little more sympathetic uh, 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 approach to the implementation of whatever schemes are available yeah that's what that's what it is okay thanks the most welcome any other questions next one is uh, next one is from mr gaurav gunjan uh, mr gaurav gunjan you can unmute yourself and speak yes hi sir good morning good morning mr gunjan yes sir i am xrnm and sir my question is that uh, i uh, read somewhere in 2008 recession it took only one month to recover the market okay so what do you think that the, how long this time it will take to recover and the second thing is that yesterday rbi governor told that in uh, g20 uh, country we are much more ahead in the terms of the uh, growth and improvement so what do you think sir how much uh, time it will take to recover so uh, thanks gorav uh, for your question i think it's a very uh, difficult uh, to estimate because you know every economy will have a different reaction i'll give you the example of china i was on a call with some chinese investors the other day and they had given the example that uh, uh, you know even though uh, their factories are back at working uh, due to social distancing norms they have uh, uh, coffee shops or retail outlets where uh, on one table you have only one person that can sit so if a husband wife is going out for a coffee uh, husband is sitting on one table and the wife is sitting on the other so they are practically not going out to drink coffee right so the point here is that how uh, uh, you know businesses will recoup will also huh. depend upon what kind of safeguards and social distancing norms are laid down after the lockdown opens up how people are able to implement them Uh, uh you know in india there are so many festivals there are uh, you know coming how whether during those festivals we will be able to maintain social distancing and the cases will not increase because uh, uh, till the vaccine doesn't come out uh, uh, the issues will remain so okay. it is only after the vaccine comes out where one can uh, stop fearing or you know reduce the kind of social distancing norms which are prevalent so the the, the recovery will definitely depend upon uh, uh, you know how the uh, covid impact continues even after this period and and that uh, may prolong a lot of uh, uh, efforts in terms of uh, recovery efforts but i think what the poll has suggested uh, of today's uh, attendees itself was a one to two year so my estimate is uh, uh, also at least a one year timeline uh, that will take at least one year there may be some sectors which may take longer uh, uh, you know people are talking about the automotive sector for instance which was anyways going through some sort of a, a rough time previously and how the uh, auto sector will recover how long they will take whether uh, you know this will be an opportunity for electric vehicles to make a bigger uh, 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 mark uh, and and have a wider acceptance so there are various issues in terms of every sector will have to face before the recovery uh, you know can prognosis can really pan out because every sector may have its own inherent challenges which it's facing uh, outside of covid and uh, that will determine how the recovery uh, moves forward okay thank you sir thank you so much most welcome most welcome any other queries uh, next one is uh next one is from mr ashok chawla sir uh, mr ashok chawla you can unmute yourself please uh, uh hi raghu this is ashok chawla 
it was a very nice uh, interaction so far uh, tell me one thing if uh, the force mojar clause is not mentioned specifically in the vendor's uh, contract and po uh, how that can be enforced very interesting question mr chavla i think uh, uh, you see what happens is uh, like we said definitely a force mojar clause uh, 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 would be there in the absence of a force mojar clause whether uh, uh, you know one can really take benefit of an fm event and uh, uh, not make payments or uh, you know, delay delivery of whatever the contractual terms is going to be difficult so i would say that in the absence of an fm clause it is not that uh, 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 can be unilaterally enforced the force with your clause can then in that event only be enforced on a mutual basis so a lot of people for instance in uh, landlord and tenant scenarios uh, uh, you know there, there are a lot of queries that are coming over there that you know landlords uh, are are uh, not being paid their rent for the month of april and so forth and rather than going into you know new clause discussion uh, people are taking a more a uh, realistic approach is saying okay we will come to some sort of a mutual understanding or settlement and even if it is not there we understand your business is shut down you are a dealership you are not able to operate your business we will come to some sort of say a 50% uh, 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 amount of the actual rent you pay us 50% so both are mutually agreed so i think these kind of a uh, little bit of a consider uh, mutual settlement uh, will approach needs to be taken where the clause is not there one needs to sit across the table and discuss and see how there could be can the court uh, take little uh, lenient view in this uh, un unlikely sir unlikely because like i said the post major interpretations which are there uh, i had mentioned the case of uh, you know the uh, supreme court judgments which are there Uh, they are all based on facts based on documents so if my documents do not support uh, uh, you know it is unlikely because like i had mentioned earlier also uh, uh, even though uh, you know physical checks are not moving you have rtgs or online payments which can be made to the landlord so uh, you know it is difficult to say uh, why Uh, tenant is not making the payment to the landlord so it will depend definitely on the facts and the documents in the absence of proper documents and facts it's unlikely the court will take a very uh, uh, we need to establish uh, 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 jurisprudence on this topic okay thanks sir go thanks it is a great you uh, bye any other questions is from mr gulshan agarwal sir uh, mr gulshan agarwal you can unmute yourself hello go ahead mr agarwal am i am i audible yes yeah hi raghu sir very good afternoon thanks for your session so basically i have a questions on tl tro funding which was announced by rbi on 27th of march so basically my question is like uh, big corporates like reliance or lnt will eat the major chunk of that fund a mark fund of total 1 uh, lakh crore so will you see there is a, some kind of conspiracy to utilize this fund for bigger corporates like hdfc already given 10% of this uh, t- uh, sorry ril is going to uh, take 10000 crore by this route and like which was not the aim of rbi earlier because uh, that was done to ease the liquidity system for msme sectors so what is your take on it you are absolutely right mr agarwal the uh, targeted long term repo operations which is the full form of tltro for the rest of the people yes, who may yes. not be there uh, targeted long term repo operations are definitely something that is being done to uh, uh, you know remove the 
the issue of funding which is there but uh, you're right in terms of the selection of who this tltro funds will be uh, uh, used for in terms of initially you know obviously everybody was talking about uh, uh, you know uh, there should be a separate tltro for mid size and small size nbfcs and other nbfcs so the point is whether these monies are going to the nbfcs and the microfinance institutions which on a systemic basis the rbi wants to support or whether it is being used for large business houses uh, uh, uh you know uh, i i generally want to stay away from uh, 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 conspiracy theories i can i can understand but i have little knowledge like sorry to interrupt i have little knowledge like t uh, lnt board is also doing similar thing so you know like the very purpose of rbi seems to be defeated that's why yesterday uh, again they announced another 50000 crore especially 50% of that money like 25000 crore will be for nbfc but again the uh, um, uh, very you know the bottom level businesses are left out so there is no solution for it as of now yes you are absolutely right the bottom level businesses uh, it would not be able to trickle down to them because at best these will be used by some of the uh, uh, you know uh, more safe uh, uh, borrowers because you know uh, obviously it, the borrowing also <laughs> depends on uh, uh, you know the credit worthiness and the safety and and the risk uh, uh, for for yeah. the recovery borrowing so you know we all are aware what the banking industry is going through stress due to npas so it is a natural a uh, 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 phenomena in the times of recession war that like i said in the earlier part of my uh, webinar the big become bigger because the mm. big are seen to be less risky and therefore uh, uh, they are uh, seen to be uh, 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 more resilient and resilience is a major uh, 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 factor oh. when you go down to lending absolutely correct so uh, like big professionals like you you can put your suggestion to uh, like um, uh, su suitable forum so that ultimately beneficial like a small startup like us like maybe you're having capital of 1 crore or 2 crore will flourish also at the same time of course i think that will be very helpful through you know cii and fiki and such other organizations we are very active with them uh, we would welcome you know your suggestions which we can put up through that channel and uh, you know the government has been very receptive uh you know there are various uh you know kind of uh, interactions which are happening at all levels and and definitely we would uh, you know like to put whatever suggestions the government seems to be quite proactive in listening to the industry these days uh, so one more question then, i want uh, yeah sorry to interrupt again like one more uh, one more question i want to ask again like uh, what are the areas in management consulting which may be flourish after this covid 19 situation uh you see anything which will have a positive impact due to digitization so in my view like we had talked about all the e-commerce industries uh or digital delivery industries that is whether it is online uh, learning online coaching online uh, uh, you know your or platforms like say what we are using today go to webinar or these kind of digital platforms all of these digital uh, digitization tools will flourish so there is definitely uh, uh, you know all the startups who are working in this field uh, uh, will will get more traction so definitely it, it will lead to like we are all saying or you know greater uh, 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 work from home so all in industries which are catering to a work from home environment that will increase say courier services or i'm not sure Uh, uh you know because uh, you you're going to have obviously more things with happening online but more home delivery kind of uh, uh, industry will also increase exactly so i think the capital firm will increase their uh, manpower to deal with this kind of opportunity as well because many deals like m&a or some kind of stressed out buyout firms will uh, happen i think what your take Yes, absolutely. I do agree that uh, M&A will uh, get realigned, and I think there will be some resetting which will happen in the M&A space. And some of these sectors, which are 
uh, uh, going to be booming due to covid will will flourish and uh, get more funding thank Any you other for your uh, suggestion thank you most welcome sir i think with that let's bring a close to this i am being informed that uh, yes, uh, shall we take one uh, shall we take one last question and then we can close this sure sure, sure. so uh, people uh, like people who have any other questions you can post it on uh, you can post it on the option which you are able to see on the screen or you can send a mail to us uh, like the confirmation which you have uh, confirmation mail which you have got if you reply to that mail we will get that we'll get the question and we'll uh, soon answer it so the last question is from mr ram kaura uh, mr ram kaura you can unmute yourself and speak hello yes mr hello. kaura uh, good morning sir good morning, good morning. Uh, sir my question is uh, how will this uh, the real sector was already under stress how will uh, how far will it take the real sector to come up now and my second Sorry, question which... is uh, about uh, import export business Uh, Mr. Kora, could you uh, repeat your question? Which sector are you talking about? Renewable uh, energy sector. First, first is uh, real sector, real estate. Ah, the real estate sector. Real estate sector was already in stress, though the government has given uh, some incentive uh, recently. But again, it has because of this. Uh, how will it be impacted, and how long will it take to come up? uh mr kora that is a, a a very tricky one i think what's happening uh, on the real estate side in india like the auto example that i gave earlier was that there was its own problems that they were going through the regulatory uh, realignment with rera and the uh, uh, better uh, you know compliance in terms of safety compliance other compliance norms in terms of improvement in the uh, selling methodology in terms of uh, uh, you know more organized uh, sector uh, uh, you know better uh, better sales initiative in terms of more informed selling techniques so there were various changes which were going through the real estate sector as it is and then now sure. this covid has come in and it has kind of uh, aggravated the problems that your sector the real estate sector is going to be facing so recovery for real estate sector uh, uh, unfortunately uh, uh, according to me will take longer that than that one year time frame i think maybe two to three years would be the time frame unless government you know obviously is trying to do something for housing uh, uh, you know housing sector seems to be uh, 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 you know obviously an important area especially in big cities where there is a lack of uh, housing but uh, uh, i do think that there will be a realignment of the uh, uh, real estate developer community also some of the old players will fade away and new players who are positive towards the new ground realities will make a mark so there right. will be uh, you know the old set of uh, uh, you know alpha profits which everybody in the real estate sector has seen in the last Uh, maybe 10 years previous, uh, uh, you know, of 40, 50% profit margins and so on and so forth. All of those players will die away because they will not be able to cope with the new reality of a 10, 15% profit margin. So a 10, 15% profit margin will need more, uh, 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 you know, different type of mindset, and that also focused on compliance, focused on RERA regulations, focused on better, uh, uh, you know, selling techniques. You know, a lot of people. Uh, uh, you know, we're going in for uh, these kind of guaranteed short return schemes. Short, I mean, which were turning out to be Ponzi schemes at the end of it. I mean, those being, uh, you know, obviously dis disrepute to the entire sector. But I think it's going to take some time for for that to play out. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, being a very capital intensive sector also. Uh, due to covid one of the first things that we are seeing is that there is a lack of liquidity and uh, credit in the industry there is a credit crunch so that yes. will further aggravate the problem of the real estate sector right sir uh, sir my second question is uh, regarding this import export business the import export business i think should look up uh, uh, depending on you know trading uh, uh, depending on the type of trading 
you know uh, there are obviously some sectors uh, uh, you know you know if you're doing technology or electronic trading uh, you know those things will look up if you're doing uh, you know depends on the type of trading item that you're doing because definitely uh, uh, with rupee falling uh, uh, you know we are at all time lows around 76 and so on so forth Uh, an exporter will definitely earn a lot more money in rupee terms right now so uh, our goods have become cheaper so export according to me will uh, 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 will should improve rather okay <clears throat> thank you sir thank you so much thank you uh, with that okay. i think thank you thank you mr maru uh, yeah uh, mr marwa manisha so uh, i thank you once again uh, on behalf of uh, icici bank you know it has been uh, a really good session you know lot of insights and uh, views that came on uh, uh, cash flows during and uh, after this crisis uh, uh, cash flows of course uh, an in- essential part of uh, especially the msme uh, segment uh, so i thank you once again uh, on behalf of uh, icici bank you're most welcome thank you everybody thank you for being such a, a patient uh, audience and and god bless and stay safe